The BBC has produced some shows covering the Platinum Jubilee celebrations of Her Majesty the Queen. We had all those uh, great parties uh, and... uh, there was a party outside St Paul's Church in Wallasey where I'm the vicar and uh, went and had uh, burgers and sausages. And yes, I paid for a hot dog for the dog because it was very hot oh my, and he was looking was... hungry. Yes, yes. It's a big celebration. Yes, I bought a separate <clears throat> one for the dog. So it's all a great day. I notice among the many congratulations on the Jubilee from various countries around the world, the Queen got a message of congratulations from Kim Jong-un, the leader of North Korea. And I was surprised by that. That's very nice, isn't it? I'm sure she appreciates you that, yes. Interesting. And all this celebration was going on, of course, the BBC was covering it. During the coverage, there was an interesting comment, which we're going to refer to now. Now, this is taken um, from an article, I believe it's by Archbishop Cranmer, is that right? That's that's correct. right. Yes. I'll just, just give the brief background to what we're going to say. The particular show in question was presented by Claire Balding, who is a regular BBC presenter. She used to be a sportswoman, went on sports commentary, and now is you know just a general commentator. Now, when it came to the section of this show celebrating religion or spirituality, Claire Balding's tone darkened as she told the country, indeed the world, by the BBC, that one of the Queen's titles was Defender of the Faith. And what an unfortunate thing this is. Archbishop Cranmer's blog. Who actually writes it? The person who is responsible for that blog is a gentleman called Adrian Hilton. Ah, Adrian Hilton, yes. He's not actually an Archbishop at all, then. No, he's not. I don't think he's likely to be in the Queen's (laughs) honours list either. (laughs) No. (laughs) This particular blog, this is published on June the 6th, he talked about a jarring moment in Ms Balding's commentary. And that was when she referred to the Defender of the Faith being unfortunate. It was a celebration of multicultural, multiracial, multi-faith diversity, tolerance and equality. And uh, a British parade of 70-year compendium of treasured national memories. But being Defender of the Faith, said Claire Balding, was unfortunate. An unfortunate title. So that was Claire Balding's comment. Unfortunate. What do you make of this then, Beryl? The fact that the Queen, and in fact all of the uh, kings and queens going back to Edward VI in 1544, have been defender of the faith. So what do you make of this particular comment? What, what was she driving at, do you think? Well, I don't think Claire Balding is a friend of the Church of England for a mm. start. Mm. I think, I think she's had obvious. a rather a rough time because of her sexuality. Well, it's um, interesting you should say that. I doubt that very much. She is lesbian, uh, identifies as a lesbian. That's celebrated these days, included by most people in the Church of England. Mm. Uh, I would say that rather she gives the Church of England a rough time. Yes. I think it's that way around. I yes. Tell you. And uh, so I wouldn't, I suppose, expect her to equate the Queen with the Church of England. She would want to separate them. I'm sure okay. she loves the Queen dearly, but um, she wouldn't want to equate the Queen with the Church. Of England and the Queen's faith would be a problem for her. Now, in this blog, it's pointed out that Claire Balding didn't provide any context for her comments. She no. didn't, he says, slightly sarcastically, refer to Tudor history or Catholic theology or Reformation mm-hmm. continuity in its constitutional context. No, perhaps was she doesn't a, know what the context is. I think that's almost certain. That's what, that's what I meant he's saying it sarcastically. He refers to the fact that the title comes from um, Henry VIII, and um, Henry VIII was called the Defender of the Faith because he wrote, his name was put to, whether he actually wrote or not, a scholarly article, scholarly apologetic essay, called Assertio Septum Sacramentorum, A Defence of the Seven Sacraments, which was against the Protestant teachings. That's where it comes from, mm-hmm. how it was given that title, by the Pope. But it being given officially by Parliament, you had to wait for King Edward VI, which I referred to earlier, in 1544, when it was given as a defence of the Protestant faith, a rather clever thumbing of the nose to the Pope yes. uh, in doing yes. so. Yeah. And so a uh, fide defensor, defender of the faith, for 471 years has been a title of the Queen. 
At what point did it become unfortunate? <laughs> well, good question. Perhaps it was when Claire Boarding unfortunately became a commentator yes. as opposed to a sportswoman because I do feel that a lot of the commentators don't seem to know their history. They're not like Richard Dimbleby and who is the other person who, who's Welsh? Um, Hugh. Hugh. I think she's out of her depth. I mean, she's very good at saying this is pretty and she's very good at saying those dogs are running around in an interesting way and all of that sort of thing. But she doesn't know the background, doesn't know the history. She doesn't know anything about theology either. Wouldn't expect her to. But then presenters are supposed to bone up on what they're presenting. I would expect her to if you were preparing to talk about the Queen. She obviously knew that the Queen was called the Defender of the Faith. You could have done a little bit, just a little bit about background reading and research on what that meant i would have expected Mm -hmm. that as a minimum or at least have said to a flunky get me a half page on and got it put in front of her but she didn't even get that so um, i think that it's unfortunate that claire balding didn't know the subject and it's 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 an unfortunate comment but however including in people who don't really know the subject we could include prince charles couldn't we Yes. Would you like to remind us of what he said? Rather casually, and you know, quite some years ago now, that when he becomes king, if that ever happens, <laughs> it would be referred to be known as defender of faith rather mm-hmm. than of the faith. He's since apparently changed his mind, but certainly that was a well-known quote from him that rankled and ran around and rattled around for years. He claims, though, that he's been misinterpreted. Yes. And he goes on to say that his mother was confirming what I was really trying to say, perhaps not very well, all those years ago. By defender of faith, Prince Charles is saying, he would then become head of the Church of England if he becomes mm-hmm. king. Uh, he's certainly next in line to the throne. He would be defender of the Church of England, which defends people's rights right to their own worship so you defend other people's faith their right to practice it Mm -hmm. as part of tolerance not because you think it's true and in fact uh, i had a celebration service in st paul's church we did refer to other religions as believing in god and they were sort of all lumped together in the sermon i pointed out that there was no way to actually know god except through jesus christ but at least they were included in the prayer I didn't put the service together. I don't know whether that's a good thing, but uh, I was happy with the service. I let it go ahead. I might not have written it that way myself, but it's an interesting point, isn't it? Because in the past, in fact, Archbishop Cram himself, the real one, wouldn't have put up with that. He would have had no truck with this other faiths. What do you mean being tolerant of other faiths? He wouldn't have uh, put up with that at all. No, I can understand why. Because there is only one faith that believes in God. The real, the real true yes. God. If you talk about the real, accurately described God, yeah, you've only got one faith, and that's the Christian faith. That's right. Uh, but of course, you've had people within the Christian church who don't know it, including <laughs> Prince Charles. I- increasing by the day, that yeah, number. Yeah. We've talked about this now, just so we've come to a side conclusion. What is the answer to this, really, is the real problem, uh, the ignorance of people, uh, of the history, particularly mm. the religious history. So it's a question of education and teaching people about it. Um, and I know on Flame Radio we do try and do that. Unfortunately, people don't seem to want to listen. That They'll turn off anything to do with religion. True, I guess that's true. Yes, yeah, so you do get people who are interested in, interested in religion. But when it comes to this, when you're talking about the Queen being defender of the faith, uh, apparently it's a worth commenting on. So if it's worth commenting on, it's worth knowing about. Yeah. Yes. I think that this weekend, Christianity has had a good shout. I was disappointed in the parade yesterday which had this religious bit and I couldn't really work out what it was. I looked for some religious symbols and I couldn't see any within it, certainly yes. not a cross. Right. And there didn't seem to be any other religious symbols. It seemed to be a bit more of a worship of nature rather than worship of anything. And I wondered whether Christianity had failed in actually getting in there on the act Or I wondered whether there was a deliberate policy that there shall be none Mm. in these multi-faith things. You sit back from it. But at other times, I think Christianity had a very good shout this weekend. Mm. Service at St Paul's was very positive. Discussions of the Queen and her faith were quite prolific during the in-between times. Even Sentamu looked very comfortable in his comfortable chair and uh, was talking positively about the Queen and her faith. 
and Christianity actually had a very, very good airing, apart from this... Claire Baldwin it, saying it's Claire unfortunate. Claire Baldwin. Yes, and it wouldn't um, be a problem if it weren't like the BBC presenters saying it, if it's just one person mm. happening to say it. I think that if you're going to do this coverage in the way that the BBC does, it's almost as like the official coverage of it, then it's beholden to you to educate your presenters a little bit about it. She may still have disagreed with it, but to say it's unfortunate is a, is a bit of a sweeping statement, isn't it? 